Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to be working out a full-length practice test for the language section of the test of adult basic education, that is the TABE test. Uh, before I do that, however, I just want to give you an overview of the TABE test itself. Uh, first, I want to point out that the TABE test is given in two versions. Uh, that is, you'll either receive a complete battery or a survey. And as you can see, the survey has about half as many questions as the battery. Uh, that said, uh, both versions have the same four subtests, namely reading, language, math computation, and applied math. Um, today I'm going to be working out 55 problems uh, for uh, the language subtest. So uh, that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, before I get to uh, the questions, I just want to point this out. Um, you'll see questions that are very similar uh, on the actual tape test. So, uh, you know, make an effort to take note of the question types that we're going through because uh, you'll see stuff that's very, very similar on test day. All right. Make sure my pen's working. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. Uh, for, for numbers 1 through 3, decide which punctuation mark, if any, is needed in this sentence. So we're looking for commas, periods, exclamation points, quotation marks, and so on. Um, number 1 says, while I knit it, Eliza studied and watched TV, or Eliza. Um, so right off the bat, I know we're going to need a comma right here. Um, and that's because while I knit it, comma, Eliza studied and watched TV. Okay, um, number two is fairly obvious. We can see there's no end mark here. Um, so we know we're either going to put a exclamation point or a period. You don't put commas at the end of sentences. Um, and we know we do need to end all sentences with some sort of end mark. So number two, when you come home, bring old clothes, period. Okay nothing exciting about that sentence so we don't need an exclamation point look closely at the ceiling Harry um, we have an end mark so we don't need an exclamation point or a period that leaves us with two options either a comma or nothing well in this case uh, you have to recognize that you offset names and sentences with uh, commas so if I gave you the sentence uh, that said um, this is the test, Jerry. You can see before the name, I actually offset it with a comma. Okay. All right. So moving on to number four, the directions say choose the word or phrase that best completes the sentence. Um, number four, the rake is hers, not blank. So um, there is never possessive, so we can cool this, uh, cross this one out. There is is not a word. The rake is hers, not they. Doesn't make sense. Theirs is correct. Again, T H E I R is the possessive form of there. So we know that this one is going to be correct. Number five, the mechanic plugged up the hole in my tire blank than I could. The mechanic plugged up the hole in the tire more skillfully than I could. Okay, just one of those ones that you have to kind of fit in the, the answer choices and find out which one sounds the best. Number six, by the time we got there, the blank by the time we got there the show blank well by the time we got there we can see this is past tense uh, so we know future tense by the time we got there the show will begin no the show is beginning that's present tense no by the time we got there the show begins again present tense by the time we got there the show had begun past tense again past tense past tense all right, 
Uh, the directions for number seven and the rest of this section, uh, choose the sentence that is written correctly and be sure that the sentence you choose shows the correct capitalization and punctuation is complete. Right, number seven, never dig out nails with a screwdriver. That sounds correct. B, with a screwdriver for digging out nails. That's not a complete sentence. Uh, never digging out nails with a screwdriver. Again, not a complete sentence. Uh, number RD, the screwdriver used for digging out nails. Not a complete sentence. Okay. Number eight, a straw hat and glasses. Well, that's not a complete sentence. Again, uh, for the most part, to have a complete sentence, you need a subject, a verb, and a verb like he said. Um, and in this case, we just have a straw hat and glasses. Um, wearing a straw hat and glasses, who's wearing it? We need a subject there. Myra wears a straw hat and sunglasses. She goes to the beach. These are two separate sentences, and there's no punctuation between them, so that's not right. Uh, number eight, when Myra goes to the beach, she wears a straw hat and sunglasses. Okay, we have a subject. Uh, we have verbs and we have action, so this one's good. Number nine, I won't never leave the house at any point. So, won't is negative, never is negative. You can only have one negative in a sentence. Won't never is a double negative, so we know that sentence is incorrect. Number nine, uh, G. Number G, letter G, sorry about that. Uh, I refuse to go outside the house today. Sounds good to me. Uh, going outside the house, a full and complete disaster. Does it make sense? J, I don't got to leave the house and go outside today. I don't have to. You would not use got in that case. So G is correct. On uh, number 10, yesterday I spent all day preparing Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving's capitalized, so I like that. Uh, B, I alone prepared Thanksgiving dinner yesterday without any help. Uh, doesn't make sense to offset that with a comma. C, I cooked all day yesterday for hours to prepare Thanksgiving dinner. Very choppy. You cooked all day yesterday and then you wrote four hours. Doesn't make any sense. Those are the same thing. Uh, 10 D it done took me hours to prepare again it done took me not proper English so we're gonna go with a number 11 I fell on that slippery porch and bruised my tailbone good uh, by falling on that slippery porch and bruising my tailbone well it's not a complete sentence uh, the slippery porch that I fell on and bruised my tailbone not a complete sentence. That porch is slippery. I fell on it and bruised my tailbone. Well, these are two sentences right here, but there's no conjunctions or punctuation connecting them, so that's not correct. Go with A on that one. Um, 12, Kristen drawing a strange postcard. It doesn't make sense. Kristen drew or is drawing, so this is not correct. Uh, the subject doesn't match the verb. Uh, G. Christian drew or Kirsten drew that strange postcard. Makes sense. H. Uh, the strange postcard drawn by Kristen. That makes sense, but it's past tense, uh, so it's not as good as this option. And J. Kristen drew that postcard. It is strange. Again, two sentences, no conjunctions linking them, so this is not correct either. 13. Haunted by friends I knew in my youth. Who? Where's the subject in that sentence? There isn't one. Being haunted by friends I knew in my youth. Again, who is being haunted by them? Not in there. I knew I knew friends in my youth. They kept haunting me. Again, two sentences. No, no conjunctions linking them, so we know that's not correct. Uh, D, the friends that I knew in my youth keep haunting me. Okay, makes sense. Fourteen. Neil and I are starting a business together. Makes sense. Again, anytime you use like 
he and I that's the same as saying we okay and you can never say me uh, he and me it has to be I there so this makes sense a business started by Neil and me together that makes sense but it's not it's not as accurate as this one Neil and I are starting a business we will run it together again two sentences no conjun conjunction linking them I like and uh, J it will be a new business Neil and I will run together does it make sense okay 15 I'd like to go to that party but I just can't makes sense you got two sentences linked with a conjunction uh, G I want and desire want and desire are the same thing I want and desire to go to the party but I just can't go so that's very choppy there for that reason it's not as good as uh, F I want to go but it's impossible for me to come and I just can't make it one two three sentences so this is a run on the party sounds like a nice and pleasant thing to do but I can't make it uh, again this is correct but it's wordy so it's not the right answer choice F I'd like to go to the party but I just can't best answer choice 16 I occasionally like to bake every now and then occasionally means the same as every now and then so that's redundant not a good answer choice uh, whenever I bake I feel relaxed and not tense at all not a terrible answer choice we'll just mark that one I find that baking in the oven can be a relaxing pastime that means that you bake yourself in the oven so that doesn't make any sense um, D when I'm tense I often find that baking helps re helps me relax good sentence okay uh, B is not gra grammatically incorrect it's just not as good of an answer choice as D all right are there any instructions for 17 I don't see any okay so uh, for 17 we have to find the sentence that is related to all the other sentences in the paragraph so as I work through these I'm gonna try to highlight what links the sentence the answer I pick with with the rest of the paragraph so blank there are already more stores here than the neighborhood can support another shopping mall would create traffic problems besides the only land left on which to build a shopping mall is Tinley Park and the park is something we really need so you can tell that uh, whoever wrote this believes that mo adding more stores to the neighborhood is a bad idea so what sentence kinda captures that this neighborhood doesn't need another shopping mall captures it many people in this neighborhood use and enjoy Tinley Park not related to this sentence which is about not needing more stores or shopping malls shopping malls give people a safe and warm place to exercise again this sentence or this paragraph is about being against more shopping malls so this is unrelated to the sentence we should support local merchants by shopping in our own neighborhoods well that's unrelated and um, again this paragraph is about the fact that they do not want more stores in the neighborhood so a is the correct answer choice 18 blank they must choose financial independence uh, they must choose between financial independence and the Kodiak bear the Alliots again that's an Indian name so I'm probably mispronouncing it uh, the Alliots own much of the bears habitat but if they want to live without government aid the Alliots may have to develop that land such development when it endangers bears so this is basically a catch-22 the Indian people have to decide whether they want financial independence or to infringe on the bears habitat so uh, Kodiak, Kodiak bears are huge unrelated it's unrelated to the debate that's occurring in the paragraph um, the people must make it difficult choice 
again, Catch-22 is about deciding between two difficult options, so that's very much related. Each uh, buying land is one of the best investments a person can ever make, totally unrelated to the paragraph. Uh, J, the wildlife in Alaska is a national treasure. Again, we're talking about this small group of people and the tough decision they must make, so we're going to go with G. Number 19, when rubber was first discovered, it couldn't be used much because it would soften in the summer and crumble in the winter. Blank, the burnt mixture stayed elastic in all winter and all weather. Goodrich became a millionaire selling his event invention. So in this paragraph, we have um, the problems with rubber, the solution that was found, and then uh, the fact that the guy who found the solution became rich. Um, so it says rubber, so let me get rid of that. Um, so we're talking about rubber, some blank here to link these ideas together, the solution that was found to make rubber more resilient, and then the guy who made that solution became rich. So let's take a look at our answer choices. Indians in the Amazon rainforest first discovered rubber. Well, this sentence doesn't mention them at all, or this paragraph doesn't mention them at all. Uh, rubber is so named because it can be used to rub out pencil marks. Again, unrelated to the paragraph. Um, then B.F. Goodrich accidentally burned a pot of rubber, lead, and sulfur. So basically, the, sen the paragraph talks about why rubber uh, was not used widespread. Then B.F. Goodrich uh, accidentally burned rubber, lead, and sulfur, which was the solution to make rubber last in the summer and winter, which got him rich. So logically, this is the correct answer choice. Um, D, synthetic rubbers have been invented. Again, the paragraph doesn't talk about that at all. All right, number 20, it's the directions say read the underlying sentences, then choose the sentence that best combines those sentences into one. Okay, number 20, I want to take a vacation. I don't have enough money to take vacation. Okay, uh, F, taking a vacation, I don't have enough money for it. Doesn't link them. Uh, G, I want to take vacation, but I don't have enough money. It just takes the two sentences and links them together with a conjunction so that works uh, H not having enough money for it I want to take vacation doesn't work uh, J I want a vacation but I don't have enough money to take a vacation so I won't take on take one one sentence two sentence three sentence once you get past three sentences you have a run on so G's the best answer choice 21, the sweater is too expensive for me. These pants are too expensive for me. So both the sweater and pants are too expensive for, for me. Uh, B, the sweater, this sweater and these pants, let's see, let's start with A. Um, this sweater and these pants are it. Now we're talking about them both being too expensive. B, this sweater and these pants are for me. No, too expensive for you. See, this sweater and these pants are too expensive for me. Not even going to read D. We know C is the right answer choice. 22, I ate a box of chocolates, then I got six. F, I ate a box of chocolate. I got sick and ate a box of chocolates. Well, this means you got sick first and then ate the chocolates. That's not what the two sentences are saying. Uh, G, getting sick, I ate a box of chocolates doesn't make sense. Um, H, I ate a box of chocolates and got sick. Okay, good. J, eating a box of chocolates. I was the one who got sick. Again, uh, H is the most concise and accurate combination of these two sentences. 23, Carmen gave me a calculator. I used it. It eventually broke. Uh, Carmen gave me a broken calculator. It uh, doesn't say that. Um, it says after you use it, it broke. Uh, B, having broken. That means having broken, I used the calculator that Carmen gave me. That means you actually broke, not the calculator. It doesn't make sense. 
See, I used the calculator that Carmen gave me, but it eventually broke. Good. Uh, Carmen gave me a calculator, and I used it, and then eventually broke one sentence, two sentence, three sentence, run on sentence. So we'll go with C. 24. It takes many bees to make a bit of honey. First, foraging bees gather nectar from flowers. Blank. The nectar turns to honey as it's passed from bee to bee inside the hive. So, uh, we know we're talking about honey, uh, how the bees gather it. We have a blank, and then we go to nectar to honey in the hive. So bees use honey as food and as food in winter, not correct. The honey is then stored in wax cells. Well that would actually come after this, so that doesn't make sense. Beekeepers sell both honey and the wax, doesn't make sense. So the topics about honey, bees go and gather them, gather nectar from flowers. Then they bring the nectar back to the hive where the nectar is turned into honey. So this one makes sense logically. 25. If you have to patch a bicycle tire on the road, follow three steps. First buff the area around the hole with sandpaper. Blank. Wait for the glue to dry and then apply the patch. So we go from buffing around the, the hole to waiting for glue to dry. So between buffing and waiting for glue to dry, we have to apply glue, which is B right here. Um, again, A says you'll need sandpaper, glue, and a patch. That lists all three things, but in this paragraph, they're listed separately. Um, C, to find a, the hole, put the tar under water. Um, not logical in the, in the series of events there. Uh, D, before going on your way, examine the patch carefully to make sure it's secure. Um, again, the blank is between sandpaper and waiting for glue. So logically speaking, you know you're going to apply glue. 26. Blank plastics are made from petroleum derivatives. Soaps and waxes are refined from petroleum. Many synthetic fabrics are made from oil. Even certain medicines and food additives are processed from oil. So we got plastics, soaps and waxes, fabrics, and medicines. Basically, uh, this paragraph's talking about everything that's made from petroleum and oil. Okay? F says petroleum products have hundreds of uses, which makes a lot of sense because we're talking about plastics being made from it, soaps being made from it, synthetic fabrics being made from it, and medicines being made from it. So uh, we got the right one right off the bat, so I'm not going to read the other ones. All right, uh, directions, read the underlined sentence, then choose the sentence that best combines those sentences into one. It snowed last night. I had to shovel the snow. I had to get up early to do it. Um, F, having snowed, I had to get up early to, sh to shovel. Um, again, this is a period, uh, so this whole thing doesn't make sense. Uh, G, I had to get up early to shovel the snow that fell last night. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, H, it snowed last night, which I had to get up early to shovel. Okay, doesn't make sense. Uh, J, it snowed last night, so I had to shovel die snow so I had to get up early doesn't make sense 28 Emmett and Hope plan to go to New York Emmett and Hope plan to share a car on their trip so both Emmett and Hope are hoping to share a car on their trip to New York uh, A Emmett and Hope plan to share New York in a car <laughs> that means they're sharing New York City inside of a car uh, Emmett and Hope plan to share a car on their trip to New York. Makes sense. Uh, going to New York and sharing a car there. Those are Emmett and Hope's plans. Again, wordy. Doesn't make sense. Planning to go to New York and sharing a car. Emmett and Hope are sharing a trip. Again, wordy doesn't make sense. 
29. I went home last month. I went to visit my grandmother. Grandmother is ill. F. I went home to visit my grandmother who was ill last month. Um, this just kind of means that your grandma was ill just last month, which isn't necessarily what the three sentences are going for. Uh, G being ill. Again, that's not a sentence, so right away we know that's not correct. H. I went home last month to visit my grandma, grandmother who is ill. Okay, good. J. To visit my grandmother, I went home last month because she is ill. Again, to visit my grandmother, comma, not a period, so it's not grammatically correct, so we know it's not a correct answer choice. H. 30. We bought a dog. We adopted a cat. The cat was a stray. Uh, the cat we adopted was a stray. Well, what about the dog? Gotta put that in there somewhere. Uh, B. Adopting the cat. Our dog was a stray. Doesn't make sense. Uh, buying a dog. We adopted a stray, a stray cat. Doesn't make sense. D. We bought a dog and adopted a stray cat. All right, makes sense. All right. Uh, again, for these, we're trying to find the sentence that logic is a logical part of the paragraph. Uh, Thirty-one. During the 1980s, hundreds of skeletons were discovered in Chile. Uh, experts were brought in to identify the dead. They compared DNA from the bones with DNA from persons whose relatives had disappeared. Okay. DNA is used to store blueprint or plan for the body. Uh, not necessarily related to the paragraph. Uh, B. The former governor of Chile was blamed. Chile was blamed for the killings. Uh, doesn't really indicate that in the paragraph. Chile is an isolated country on the west coast of South America. Again, we're talking about identifying people using their DNA from bones. It's kind of unrelated. Uh, D. When the DNA was found to be similar, the experts knew from whom the bones had come. Okay, that is the next logical sentence in this paragraph. Uh, 32 doesn't have a blank anywhere, so I'm not even going to do it. Again, we're just practicing, and since they didn't put a blank in there, we're just going to move on. Uh, 33, in 1992, the U.S. duck population declined more drastically than it had since the 1930s. The decline was especially worrisome to environmentalists because the duck population has traditionally been used to indicate the population of wildlife in general. So we're talking about duck population declining. Uh, environmentalists use the duck population to gauge other animals. Um, so let's look at the results. As a result, most endangered species suffer from ha loss of habitat. Not really what the paragraph's getting at. Uh, B. Nevertheless, every year scientists estimate the number of wild ducks living in the United States. Uh, the paragraph's starting to shift to talk about how ducks are used to measure the populations, the health of populations in other animals. C. In other words, when there are fewer ducks, scientists assume that many other species are probably in trouble. That's exactly what the paragraph's saying. D, on the other hand, there's a lot of talk today about disappearing wildlife, but not every endangered species disappears. Again, unrelated. Uh, 34, gas stations often charge less for auto maintenance than car dealers do. Blank, otherwise you can lose some of the protection provided by your car warranty. Okay, so we're going gas stations charge less money. Blank. Uh, could lose your warranty. So we got to link those two things together. Service at a gas station being cheaper and losing your warranty. Uh, therefore, you ask people know, you know to recommend a good mechanic. It's not what the paragraph's about. Even so, certain dealers will wash your car after they change the oil. Again, we're not really talking about car washes. H, however, if you use a gas station for auto maintenance, keep careful records of the work service its service people provide. Otherwise, you can lose m some of your warranty. Makes sense logically. Consequently, co consequently, 
if you don't perform routine maintenance on your car your warranty may no longer be in effect again that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the price of service at gas stations affecting your warranty so H is the most logical choice uh, for numbers 35 and 36 read the paragraph then choose the sentence that does not belong okay um, 35 when we first opened this restaurant a lot of people complained about the cold food the restaurant opened in 1988 then we start getting a ringing bell whenever the order was ready. Now customers rarely grumble about cold food. So again, in this paragraph we're talking about uh, cold food, putting in a bell that makes the food be delivered on time so customers stop complaining. So the sentence about the, when the restaurant opened is unrelated, so it would be sentence two in this case. 36, there are several basic things you need to cook Chinese food. Uh, most Chinese food must be cooked in a special pan called a wok. Uh, three, soy sauce and cornstarch are needed for most Chinese recipes. Chinese food is tasty and nutritious. So this one's going to be sentence four. Again, we're talking about what you need to cook Chinese food. This one talks about the wok, which you're going to cook the food in. This one's talking about soy sauce and cornstarch to cook the Chinese food with. So, and sentence four just says it's tasty, so we know it's unrelated. Uh, th for numbers 37 through 41, read the passage and look at the numbered underlined parts. Uh, choose the answer that is written correctly for each underlined part. Okay. So, um, I would never recommend you read these paragraphs in their entirety just take it piece by piece so 37 is right here just as I do my son Jamal tends to overstate things so we got my son Jamal offset with a comma remember what I said names are always offset with commas the son's the first letter of the son's name is capitalized which is correct so in this case um, the sentence is correct as is uh, 38 as a result he's made some pretty humorous statements uh, take a look right here after this period we need to capitalize this H since we're starting a new sentence uh, let's take a look at our answer choices humorous is ca statements are capitalized doesn't make sense humorous the S in statements is capitalized doesn't make sense uh, correct as is I already pointed out that it's not H is capitalized, so we know it's going to be A. 39. Um, he made his funniest exaggeration after climbing, after this should be trying to climb the trellis on the front porch of the house on Baker Street. Okay, so looking at this, I know we always capitalize name, names of streets. So this B has to be uh, capitalized. Let's take a look at our answer choices. Front porch, that doesn't need to be capitalized. House on Baker Street, house does not need to be capitalized, nor does street. Front porch of the house on Baker Street. Okay, so let's take a look. It's not correct as is. And forget what I said about capitalizing street. You can do that, so it's going to be H. 40. Um, Debbie and Kim were in their teens then, and they had started demanding privacy around the family. I don't know why family is capitalized, so we know we're going to have to lower, make that lowercase, especially their brother. Again, the B in brother does not have to be capitalized. So again, this family's capitalized. We know it's not correct. Family's capitalized. We know it's not correct. Family's lowercase and brother's lowercase, which is correct. Okay. Jamal couldn't resist using uh, this against the girls. He waited into the morning of Easter. We always capitalize holidays. Sunday. Again, we always capitalize days a week. So let's take a look at our answer choices. Morning should not be capitalized. The morning of Easter Sunday. Again, Easter and Sunday are capitalized, so that's good. Uh, the morning of 
Easter is not capitalized, so that's not correct. Correct as is, I already pointed out that we had to capitalize Easter. Okay, 42, choose the, the answer that best develops the topic sentence. Certain jobs expose people to disease. Okay. Um, healthcare workers come in contact with a lot of sick people. Daycare workers and teachers are exposed to diseases by sick children. Healthcare workers a job. Daycare workers a job. Teachers a job. Ex healthcare worker, sick people. Daycare teachers, disease by children. So A is more than likely going to be the right answer choice. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop there and move on since I know that is the right answer choice. 43, all kinds of people square dance. Um, so we're looking for sentences that develop the idea that different types of people square dance. F, uh, most of us think square dancing as a traditional American art. Again, this is not talking about people who square dance. G, square dancing takes some training, but it's very easy to learn. Again, we're talking about the types of people who square dance, not about learning it. Uh, H, professional square dancers wear elaborate costumes. Again, we're not talking about costumes that they wear. J, square dancing is popular among right, retirees. That's one group of people. Many singles have discovered uh, that square dancing is a good way to meet people. So this talks about two groups of people who enjoy square dancing, so it's the right answer choice. Uh, 44, read the paragraph, then choose the sentence that does not belong in the paragraph. I just love Kia's new babysitter. Kia is a very bright child. The babysitter takes Kia for a walk every day. She also gives Kia involved in art and music. So we're talking about the babysitter and what she does for Kia. So the talking about the babysitter. The babysitter takes her for a walk and she also gets Kia involved. The fact that Kia is bright is irrelevant, so sentence two. Uh, 45, men and women use doctors differently. Women see their doctors more often than men do. Medicine has made great advances in the last century. Again, we're talking about men and women and how they use their doctors, not medicine. Um, men often put off seeing their doctors until their medical problems are serious. So sentence three. All right, for numbers 46 through 50, read the passage and the letter and look at the numbered underlined parts. Choose the answer that's written correctly for each. Spider webs seem weak and fragile, but it is against spider webs is plural so we know we're talking about but they referring to plural spider webs they are made of strong stuff if it said spider web is may seem weak and fragile it'd be singular here but it's plural so we need to go with they are um, in fact spider silk is more stronger than any other natural fight fiber um, spider silk is stronger than any other known natural fiber so we'll just go with stronger 48 um, unfortunately until recently there was no way to get more than a tiny bit of spider silk at one time there were no way again this is singular so this should be was there was no way to get it Uh, 49 uh, so it wasn't practical to use spider silk for nothing again we have wasn't and nothing double negative can't have that in a sentence so it wasn't practical to use spider silk for anything again we just got rid of the double negative um, in the past decade, however, scientists have developed new techniques that may soon make it possible to produce synthetic spider milk or spider silk that, not what. 
and that's referring to the new techniques. All right, five more questions. Uh, for numbers 51 through 55, read the letter and the passage and look at the numbered underlined parts. Choose the answer that is written correctly for each underlined part. Okay, so 51 is right here, the date. Um, dates are always written like that. Again, April, oops, I wrote it wrong. April 3, 2010. And you put the comma after the day and the, and the date and before the year. So this is correct. Correct as is for 51. 52. Um, PO stands for post office and it's always capital capitalized with periods. P capital O capital and then the B in box is capital capitalized. So let's take a look. Uh, PO is capitalized, but the B's not. PO with the dots and B's capitalized, so that's good. Uh, box 308. Well, you need a PO box in front of that, and correct as is is not correct. Uh, 53, Shady Grove, Indiana, 9. Uh, 94206. This is correct as is. Whenever you put uh, city, states, and zip codes, it's uh, the name of the city followed by a comma, followed by the state, followed by the zip code with no comma between the zip code and the uh, name of the state. Okay, 54. The D's got to be capitalized. Mr. Rivera. Um, now, in letter writing, some people use colons and some people use commas. Um, so let's see what our answer choices are. But regardless, we know we're capitalizing the D. Um, you always use a salutation like dear, so this is not correct. The D's capitalized, the D's capitalized. And look, we have a comma, and we have a colon. I'm going to go with the colon, uh, but if you got this one wrong because you picked the comma, most people, uh, I mean, this is a matter of preference, which makes this a bad problem to ask, but the correct answer is to use the colon. Um, correct as is is not correct. Uh, 55, we'll refund your money. We will, that's a contraction of we and will. So we'll refund your money. Okay, so you need to make this well into we will or the contraction. Um, right there's the contraction in the correct form. And then the rest of the sentence is correct. We ill, doesn't make sense, not correct as is. Uh, we will refund you are, this is contraction for you are money. Doesn't make sense. So G is the correct answer choice. Uh, 53, I didn't pick the right answer, but I said it was correct as is. And there would have to be a comma there. So um, I know that was a long uh, video, but hopefully you found some value in it. If so, uh, please feel free to leave some feedback in the comment section below as well as like this video. Uh, but on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.